as we look at the two chords, the top chord and the bottom chord, you'll notice that the bottom chord, uh, if we put two of our tubes on here, you would be inclined to want to put the connecting point in the middle of the bridge. That's not a good idea. In fact, because this is a bottom-loaded bridge, all of the force will be applied right to that connecting point. And very typically, this is a place where the bridges can break. So my suggestion is to take the tube, one tube, and put it in the middle like so. I left that tube a little bit better. And now there's no uh, connecting point where the load is going to be applied. You take the second tube and cut it approximately in half. It doesn't have to be exact. If you want to make it exact, you can measure. But about in half is good. And that's not too bad. So we're going to take the third tube, and I'm going to cut a length about two and a half to three inches long scissors and I'm going to make another one that's the same length and I'm going to take these and I'm going to flatten them. This will become, their use will become apparent in a moment. I'm going to flatten them. I need to really push them down and then I'm going to fold them. And I'm going to fold them just like so. I'm going to fold this one. put glue and this requires a fair amount of glue. I like to get them quite a lot of glue on there and there are two reasons for that. One is that it makes the joint considerably stronger but it also acts as a lubricant when it goes inside the tube. And Now I'm pushing it roughly halfway into the shorter tube and I'm going to take some more glue it into the middle tube. And as we push that on, you can see that now it's very, very secure. It doesn't really flex, and that will become a very permanent joint once the, uh, the, the glue has, has dried. So let's do that with the other side. not being shy with the glue. That's why I keep my paper towel next to me so I can wipe my hands. I need to be clean. All right. So I'm going to take that and we're going to push that on the inside. And I find that just rotating it and twisting it in is the best way uh, to get these to come together very, very quickly and neatly. All right, so now we have our bottom cord. The bottom cord is longer, or seemingly longer than it needs to be. Again, my suggestion is not to cut this to fit the ends. It is better to just leave it long, and if you want to trim it later, that's fine, although generally there's another uh, little tip that I'll be showing you as we get further along in the process where you use this excessive amount to your advantage. So I would keep this in place. I would not cut this. So I've grabbed the pin block. These are T-pins, which are a uh, wonderful uh, invention. Uh, I'm going to show you that the T-block, I've carefully put all my pins, uh, arranged them so that they're, they're above the surface of this piece of foam. Uh, I know it's a really a beautiful thing to be able to push this down and to kind of mash these in and it feels really great but in the end it slows you way down and it's much better to have these pins uh, accessible and ready to grab. So our first step, let me get that out of the way, the first step <clears throat> is to make sure that our bottom cord is absolutely straight 
and fits right inside the lines of our drawing. So I like to start in the middle and I take my my T-pen and I put it at an angle and I push it down so that it holds the cord right on the line but if you put them at an angle and you put the second one in it also prevents it from, from being able to lift this tube up. So you could put them beside the, the tube and it would hold it so that it wouldn't move back and forth but it would still uh, allow the tube to be lifted and there's a goal with the pins is to keep it right in alignment but also to keep the tube from being lifted. This is very very important. So I'm going to work this all the way down on both sides of the tube. notice that I'm not putting any of the pins in a location that is next to my struts because I don't want these to be interfered with or to interfere with my struts. Um, there's also uh, the possibility of gluing uh, these pins into place if you get them close to the strut because there's always a little bit of glue around here and then that makes it uh, a little more difficult to remove your, your bridge from the side of the Move, remove the bridge from your plan. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we've gotten to this this point where we have our our uh, bottom cord in place. I'm going to go away for a few minutes and build a little a uh, little more on the bridge so that you don't have to watch me in that process. And then I'm going to explain to you how to fit struts into uh, the, the, the model plan here and it will give you uh, really the rest of the process for, for finishing your bridge side. Alright, so I'll, I'll move on and I'll see you in a minute.